What's happening, buddy? This is Hayden Adams with A Designer Who Codes. Jeff is back, my name for the Spaceman, and we're back with the Gatsby Default Starter. In this project, I'm gonna build a sub-navigation using React Bootstrap, and the best part about it is we're gonna tweak it so it becomes mobile-friendly where I can scroll side to side and leverage the power of this sub-navigation. And with that, let's get started. All right, so I'm using the Gatsby default starter and I did modify it just a little bit because I wanted to add some extra components. Because we are using React Bootstrap in my layout after installing it, I did bring in the Bootstrap unified CSS file and I do have to write some custom CSS, thereby I wrote custom CSS as well. But for everyone loving the purple with Jeff, I did keep the layout CSS as is but I'm gonna overwrite it as I add some extra components into my project. The custom CSS file is totally empty and the index file, all I really did was I just added the container just so we could see it move back and forth as we move and move and move. That's all it is. So I just changed a little bit of that project. What I first wanna do is I wanna build the sub navigation into a specific component. So I'm gonna create a new file, and I'm gonna call this one sub navigation. So I'm gonna head down to the source folder and into components, I'm gonna call this one sub-navigation.js. Create a brand new project. So in here, I'm gonna import React from React. So import React from React, just to kick it into gear. There we go. And then I'm gonna import links from Gatsby. So I'll import capital L link from Gatsby. Quote Gatsby, there we go. And I actually build this project, I'm gonna use the const or constant, and I'm gonna call this sub navigation. So I'll say const, C-O-N-S-T, and I'll call this one sub navigation equals open and close parentheses, equals greater than symbol, and then open and close the paren, and I have to put something in this area to make it work. I'm gonna write the container from React Bootstrap. So I'm gonna say import, open and close curly brackets, you should put a space in here, from, and in here I'm gonna say React Bootstrap. So I'll say React Bootstrap. The great part about React slash Gatsby is that I can just type the word container and it auto populates from React Bootstrap. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say container, open and close. And I'm gonna write the word test for right now. At the very bottom, I have to export default, default sub navigation. Perfect. It was looking pretty good. I'm gonna ignore this link for right now because to me, I haven't used the link. So it will give us an error message in theory in our terminal. Now that I have this component written successfully, I'm gonna ignore the link for right now. I wanna make sure the word test shows up inside of the Gatsby default starter on this index page. So in my index, I'm gonna come up to the top. I'm gonna to add it in the middle up here. I'm gonna say import sub navigation from components and we'll bring in the sub navigation. Now what I can do is I can bring it right below the SEO and above this first container. Actually, I'll put it inside the first container. So what I'll do is I'm gonna say sub navigation. Actually, I'm gonna put it above it because I'm gonna have two containers there. Let's go right there. Perfect, that's what I was thinking of. Now what I should see is the word test. Awesome, we have our component working, so now we're gonna go and actually add the navigation inside this component. The reason why I use a component is, I'm gonna put this on multiple pages in theory as I have multiple pages to my sub navigation. Now I have my terminal off to the side and it does tell me there is an error message because I haven't used that link yet within the sub navigation. Totally fine, we're gonna use the links in a few minutes down below right here. So if we head back to our sub navigation, since we are here in the container, I wanna use the nav component. So I'm gonna say nav up here, 
And I also want to add down below the nav. So I'll say nav here. And I want to do is I want to fill this across the page. So I'm going to say nav fill and the variant slash style to this design is going to be pills. Let's take a look and see how this looks down the road. Now that we have our nav all set to go up top, now I want to do is I want to add the nav dash items. So I'm going to say nav dash, not nav dash item. That was a bootstrap five in react bootstrap. It's nav dot item. I make sure I don't confuse myself between react bootstrap and bootstrap nav item. Here we go. We're going to now add that link to, and for the first one, we're going to say homepage just so you can see how it looks in the active state. So we'll say nav to quote slash class name equals nav link to pull. This is a classic bootstrap five approach class nav link, and we'll add an active class name equal to active. And in there, we're going to write current page. And now when I save this, what's going to happen is that current page is going to fill across the entire container. If I didn't have the word fill, it'll just go current page in the pill. And you can have either pills or tabs if you want it like this design. Now this obviously doesn't look very good, but if we take the fill out, it now just goes to its single state right here. I'm going to keep the fill because I like the way it looks on most designs because it just feels empty if there's not anything filling up the space. Now that I have the nav item for the first one, let's do it again. So I can even duplicate this design by copying and pasting. And the difference is I want to make sure the link to is not the same. Otherwise, they'll all be linked as active. So I'm going to call this one page dash two and slash. And after this nav link active class name, I'll change this now to page two. And if I duplicate this to page three and page three and page four and page four and one more time for the fifth one, let's go page five. Now there is no pages for these. I'm not worried about it. I just want to see how it looks up on the screen. Awesome. This looks so much better. We have current page. We have page two, page three, page four, and page five. Now it looks good on the desktop. Let's take a look and see how it looks like on the mobile environment. So if we inspect this, ooh, well, that's not very good. Now, if you want to use the pills, I can kind of get away with this, but I want this to be mobile friendly. I want this to scroll side to side, thereby I'm not having this jargon of pages kind of spread across this area. This is also why I created a custom CSS file, so I have to write a couple things to make this work. So in the custom CSS, I'm going to write two things. I'm going to say nav tabs, if you're using tabs, and I'll also include the nav pills in case you're using the nav pills for your design. Your choice up to you. I'm just going to give you both as an example. I'm going to first set the overflow X to auto. I'm going to write the next thing I'm going to say is white space. So I'll say white space and this one's going to be no wrap. Now I'll show you what this one does in a second, but we have to kick on the third for it all to work. I want to say flex wrap and in here I'll say inherit. It's going to go back to its parent and like magic, check it out. Now you can scroll. There's a barely little vertical line, but pretty much you can scroll side to side on this approach right here. Now the white space, the reason why I wrote this one is if you don't wrap it, notice how page two, page three, page four, and page five show up they're vertical up and down. The no wrap prevents it from wrapping quite literally and we'll save it. Thereby it goes back to this design where it's in this horizontal positioning. If you want more help in Gatsby building navigations and also working with the link tag, I've got a few videos here as well to work with. As always, I'm Hayden Adams with The Designer Who Codes.